just as a random potential. And this seems interesting. Okay, so it would appear that England is reformed. So, for those people that are not aware, we added reformed religion in Res Publica, which was the expansion which basically focused on merchant countries as well as the Dutch Republic. Now, and obviously we added the, the religion, which added a whole bunch of cool modifiers, which allowed us to do trade focus, war focus, stability focus, and you spend these things called fervor points. Now, the bo these bonuses are huge. For instance, you want to have stability? Damn, bam. National risk by minus two. Diplom diplomatic reputation? Plus one. No problem. War? You got morale of armies? You got your morale of armies. You want your global trade power? Then go on trade. And England is now... You know, they're not Angelican, if that is even a thing. By the way, uh, mispronouncing stuff is kind of my thing, so don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, they are uh, they are looking weird. So yeah. Also, people are asking, what the hell is going on with Brabant? Well, Brabant, let's take a look at Brabant, shall we? First of all, they've managed to decide, you know, we don't like England very much, so we're going to rival you. That seems to be legit. As uh, our good friend Johan Lerström, the head of uh, uh, CK2, would say, too legit to quit. Also, he is awful for saying these things, and uh, yeah. But uh, let's take a look here. He has rivaled England, France, and Sweden. I would like to point out that this is being played by the AI. So Brabant, as you can see, with its letters being almost as big as Bohemia, is actually being controlled by the AI, and somehow this OPM managed to conquer most of the Low Countries and a big chunk of East of Western Germany. There is something you don't see every day. I think the main reason because of this is, is that Holland is actually a vassal under England, which causes this entire, a bit of a power vacuum from an AI point of view, and allows, uh, well, Brabant to expand. So, yeah. Ah, that's good. I'm, I'm drinking tea, by the way, but from the largest mug I could find. But yeah. Meanwhile, the Hanseatic League is pretty much doing what the Hanseatic League does, and that's expand by using copious amounts of mercenaries. Something probably that's very interesting for us to take a look at. Uh, the Hanseatic League controlling, controls 41% of the trade here in the Lübeck trade note, which is pretty standard, to be honest. However, however, he says, Sweden controls 30% of the Baltic. Now, Sweden is currently being played by Johan. PDX Johan, to be exact. Now, I'm really curious on what Johan is trying to do, because he's also reformed. And he's slowly but steadily... Oh my god, there's Protestants everywhere. Oh god, we've got centers of reformation. There's a re center of reformation here in Saxony, and another one here in Vienna, and another one in Calais. As well as two in Northumberland and Lothian, so we have ourselves a bit of a you know a religious war uh, potentially on our hands. I'm sure the Pope would not approve, even though the Pope has got a serious large amount of area. What the hell is Ulm? Somebody in the chat asks. Well, Ulm is the nation that beats all nations at everything, um, and there it is. It also has the best logo in the game, or at least the best flag. The coat of arms, so to speak. And I've pretty much used like five different names for what I meant the same thing, but totally means something else. Also, their ruler is awful, and uh, technology-wise, they are a little bit behind. Meanwhile, Songhai is now easily... Let me quickly tag into them, if I can. Uh, if I can see them, for that matter. Castile, where are you? There you go. So if we tag into... Okay, I just need to do it this way. If we tag into Songhai, as you do, Songhai has a couple of things going for it. First of all, it is not Western. 
<laughs> which means that not only is this African country going to stomp everything in its way, it is also, and uh, hold on to your butts, have two vassals. Now, the vassals love Songhai, as you do. And right now, the Katsina only exists as a buffer zone between these down here because, you know, bad relationships, because of border tensions, etc., etc. You know, that is totally a thing. However, it does mean that Songhai, now that they are Western, will have a super easy time getting their technology up because they are Western. Now, obviously, we did the modifications back in 0, 1.6 or 1.7 that you no longer get the Western tech units when you Westernize. You just get the technology bonuses. That kind of makes sense. You know, it, it's not like, you know, the when the when the Japanese westernized, they they didn't instantly take over the uh, western style troops. Of course, eventually they did, but um yeah, eventually they definitely did, which um, you know, it's uh, it caused some uh, frictions. Good job, Wiz, on westernizing. That's true, Sergio. All needs its own national idea set. The term now comes out. Yes, it does. And I'm sure we can do some sort of writing competition. It does. Ah, well, look at this. Crusader Kings 2, the way of life, uh, is now seducing the digital storefronts worldwide. So uh, there you go. Patch V is 2.3 has been released as well as uh, The Way of Life. So be sure to go and check that out. It's pretty cool. The trailer is out as well, so you can go and check that out. We're going to go and uh, show that later. Still, in the meantime, let's continue, sing continue focusing here on EU4. Now, I was told the other day that I'm one of the few people in the world that actually uses a spectate mode. This may have something to do with the fact that I was the one that requested it. Specifically for these multiplayer sessions. Now, we are playing in-house. And um, before we continue, and I have mentioned this before, um, what you're seeing is beta material. It may crash. It may look a little bit different from what you have in your normal game. Um, and that is perfectly normal because this is a beta. We're going to change stuff. We're going to try out new things. Now, I've seen, uh, you know, we're going to be showing some very interesting things over the next few months. Uh, for pretty much all of our titles when it comes to, you know, uh, transparency and how development has been working because we're kind of working towards a uh, situation where we're just pretty much saying, hey, we're producing this game. Why won't you guys take a look, see what it looks like? We'd like to hear your feedback. And that's pretty much how our approach has been so far. We like our transparency because it allows us to pretty much engage with you guys as much as possible because in the end we make the game you guys are the ones that are actually playing it so and it kind of initially you know it, it started a while ago and then obviously we had the Arumba 12, 12 points of Arumba which is not to be confused with uh, Wilson's 14 points um, but still feedback like that is absolutely awesome and uh, be sure to check out those videos on towards YouTube because um, yeah they they really really help Feedback from Arumba, as well as other people on the forums, on YouTube, on any other sort of channel. It helps so much. And this is exactly why we play these uh, these dev sessions. Just so you guys can get a taste of what is to come. And also to give that feedback. And be sure to check that out onto the forum at ParadoxPlaza.com. You have to, have to add forums.ParadoxPlaza.com onto it. Because uh, that is probably the best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Who play as Japan? Uh, I don't think anybody's playing as Japan. Dorime is playing as uh, Korea uh, down in. I always, I always get this wrong. I always think like Korea must be around here, right? Because you got, you got this island, so that must be around. No, no, Matt. Your geography is awful. Korea is in the Sea of Japan, also in the Sea of you know, the, the Chinese Sea, the Yellow Sea, as we refer to it in this particular game. Korea is very strong, though. As uh, working together here with Sol Sara, who is our uh, lead on, I think is a graphics lead for PDS, and uh, he has got the entire gra uh, art team below him, which is uh, really cool. But so far, it does look like we have ourselves 
a inverted Korean conquest. Remember, Japan, it tried to westernize, and Japan is one of those really, really, really good example of counter-imperialism. Now, they decided at one point, you know what, all these westerners, if we can't beat them, we gotta join them. So they basically said, yeah, we're gonna go and westernize in real life now, and with that westernization became, became imperialism. Now, I'm not saying that one leads to the other, History kind of sort of, you know, implies that it does. And uh, Japan uh, immediately decided to uh, invade Korea and Manchuria. And, you know, one thing came to another and a nuclear bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, I just uh, brushed over about 200 years of history in like one sentence. It's not bad. Anyway, Japan these days, very different nation than from this area. I think we're, I think we're kind of at the end when was the Warring States? Yeah, it was around this time, wasn't it? Yeah. So the 14th, the 15th century was the Warring, uh, the Warring States, the Shogunate, and unified Japan wasn't really a thing before that time frame. That's still. We shall see. Big in Japan, Alphaville. Be honest, Matt. We watch this for your sultry voice. Indeed. Only the sultriest of voices for you people out there. What do you think about Arumba being Northern Lion's evil clone? I did see the video. I did watch the video, and it was really cool, actually. It, it was, it's for those people that are not, uh, not aware. Arumba recently hit 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, and in parallel with that, in combination with that, he released, he did a four-hour stream, a four-hour broadcast, uh, basically, you know, talking about who he is, what he does, and literally, you know, he, he pretty much pour his life into our proverbials, into our proverbial laps, really. And uh, it was very interesting to see. Also, the fact that he is um, a looks a lot like Northern Lion's evil twin uh, may have something to do with it. But uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of cool to see, you know, that sort of thing. Be, fair, be sure to go check that out at Roomba 07. It's on uh, on YouTube. It's four hours long. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a slog to get through, but uh, it's full of very interesting information that uh, I thought was super useful when it comes to, you know, tracking him down and do some internet stalking, etc. Don't do that, by the way. It's, it's, it's not socially acceptable to do so, just so you're aware. So, Greg Kolf, what are you up to? You're in England and you've got Scotland under you. That's all perfectly fine. You are going to need to do the Western administrative tech, which you already have. Huh. Let's take a look. From the British nation, owns the core province of Lothian and Aberdeen. Well, let's take a look. At the moment, he is improving the relationship with Scotland, and uh, let's see if he managed to pull it off. And that, that's, the, that's the extent of my horrible, horrible-esque English accent. Ah. Uh. This music is uh, strangely satisfying. Anyway, Castile is at war <laughs> with Portugal. Portugal, which now consists of three provinces, and uh, they will soon be uh, destroyed. And what we'll see then, ah, Jonas, so it's a player nation. And then he will, uh, he's not actually started the counter-reformation. What religion is he? He's Catholic, fair enough. Does he have any uprisings? He does not, I assume he's zealots. For those people that are not aware, um, the Iberian Peninsula, up to the end of the Reconquista, was a huge, huge Muslim, or a Muslim, Islamic stronghold. Uh, I think it was one of the Umayyads, and they were very much focused on, like, engineering and architecture. There's some, if, you ever, if you ever managed to find yourself in Cordoba, you know, let's, let's say you accidentally stroll into Cordoba. It's a beautiful city. It's, it's, it's filled with beautiful architecture from the Moors and at that particular time frame. Uh, obviously, the Muslims were ejected or expelled, expelled, uh, outcast from Iberia after the Reconquista by the Spanish kings 
and or queens. Um, but Cordoba is still there and it hasn't been pulled down. Obviously, most of the areas have been oh, most of the uh, most of the things. You know, the the mosque has been turned into like Christian related stuff, just like how the Hagia Sophia, the largest. Christian church was turned into the largest uh, mosque on the planet right before, you know, before Mecca, obviously, because, you know, the the central the central mosque in in, uh, in Mecca around the Kaaba is, I believe, one of the largest uh, mosques on the planet or these religious areas for uh, Islam. A uh, very fascinating. I really wish I could go to Mecca, but I am sadly not a very religious person myself. But visiting Mecca would be amazing. There's so much history there; it's not even funny. Um, obviously the Kaaba, but I, I sadly will have to, I sadly will have to, uh, you know, accept the fact that I, my eyes will never, never see uh, the, uh, the, the Mecca itself because I am not a Muslim. Therefore, I'm not allowed into the city.